Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hi. So I came to do this video and I'm going to be giving you a summary of the history of the People's Republic of China from 1949 from its founding till 1958. This is a summary going into basically the history of China. And basically I will be going through this summary and basically give you a, a bit of a basically kind of like a history lesson of like China during this type of this time uh, from 1949 to 1958 and this was written by a good comrade of uh, mine that I met uh, comrade Lucas and I remember I was in a study group where I got this uh, slideshow so let's start with the slideshow an overview Presentation plan. We're going to be going over through the overview, starting positions of the conditions of the PRC, land reform in the PRC from 1949 to uh, 1952. Why did La Mao launch further land reform? Maoist slash socialist land reform from 1952 to 1958. Uh, industrialization, the first five-year plan from 1953 to 1957. The social reforms and slash development in the PRC and the uh, and from 1954 to 1958. Foreign relations and social imperialism. Why was the Great Leap Forward launch? Outcomes of Mao's policy up to 19. 48 goals and outcomes get through an explanation on why the results of the key policy during the Mao's period as call it the Mao era <laughs> or revolutionary China providing comrades with a new source of evidence to defend our position and provide an education understanding how China's Mao's experiment was closely linked to the key theories in Maoism basically my goal here is just to teach you guys because I think it needs to, I think people are going to need some education and I hope a lot of y'all will enjoy it and I will link the Google doc I'll link the slideshow in the description down below for you guys to go check out definitions socialism is defined by th these main characteristics means of production are owned by the direct producers uh, workers and peasants Producers have control over the product of their labor, empowerment, and growth of the proletariat. Distribution of production is done based on work contributed and important needs. Capitalism is defined by these characteristics. Main characteristics, purpose of production is value and valorize production and distribution is done for profit power and prosperity and capital is controlled by the bourgeoisie means of production capital projects expand establish and maintain capitalist relations in its mode of production its goal is to increase increase the rate of capital accumulation and increase surplus value extraction from the workers the starting conditions of the p the People's Republic of China. The land system and exploitation and rule under development. One. Land system and conditions were semi colonial and semi feudal. Agriculture and productivity were extremely low, further damaged by war and famine. Surplus labor was extremely small, was most extracted via rent taxes by landlords. 60 plus 70 percent of the peasants didn't even have even own a plow let's strap after an animal or other farming tools let a draft animal or other farming tools conditions were worse the fur er, there a peasant was from ownership of the means of production landlords had disappropriate dis it power and uh an influence in the countryside peasants were mired in poverty 
lack of basic services, and famines were common. Okay, columns, owner, peasants, owner, peasants at the same time, tenant, peasant, tenant and peasant, tenants and peasants, same time, average household, which I'll zoom in for all of you guys to go check. You can pause it if you want to go read it. I'm not going to read it for you because I'm lazy. <laughs> Just kidding. I'm joking. I'm messing with you. Modernization of agriculture. Track their plowed area as per percentage 0.1% in 1952 to it grew to. 2.4% then grew to uh 15%. Irrigation area as a percentage 18%, increased to 24% to 31%. Power irrigation as a percentage of age in total from 1% to 4% to 24%. Kilos of chemical fertilizer less than 1%, now 3%, increased to 18%. Small hydropower stations increased all the way to, I think, over, basically over 500. Generation capacity in the thousands of kilowatts, 8,000 to 20,000, then over that. <laughs> Total horsepower, horsepower of agriculture. Uh went from 25 to 165 to 1,494 from 1 to 40 14 to 72% it was not known for the small walking tractors motors and agriculture drainage and irrigation and then combined harvests and uh, motor fishing boats. All these were intended for agriculture use. Many were used for goods as well. Okay. Education and social conditions. Part one. In 1949, the People's Republic of China was proclaimed proclaimed illiteracy stood between 85 to 90 percent total lack of secondary higher education for the overwhelming majority of the population education of both for both the urban and rural masses was prior for for the cp the communist party of china the communist party of china launched a massive literacy campaign by 1959 from basically increased it from 12% to 40% had a literacy rate from 43% state built a national education system nationalization of schools at all levels popularizing an adoption of Simplified, Chi simplified Chinese in 1955. Hestons and benefits, education efforts, targets of universal primary education by 1963 to 1968. Uh, education conditions. This is from the period of 1952 to 1957 was a period of education reform reconstruction of secondary technical schools tools and skilled workers worker schools expansion of general secondary education paired with the quality of improvement shift the teaching and focus to secondary instead of primary education saw the creation of a new model of higher education heavily based on the soviet model and higher of higher education, reestablished on many 
institutions of education that existed before 1949 to 1953, management and control of the higher education institutions centralized. Numerous universities, university students sent to the Eastern Bloc for further education. Enrollment in secondary schools of China from 1949 to 1997 in thousands. Y'all can look at this. You can pause the video if you want to go check it out. Next, total government expenditures on education by planned periods of 1950 to 1992. You can pause the video if you want to look at the statistics. Social conditions. Before 1949, the vast majority of the population didn't have basic services and infrastructure. Crime and poverty, sanitation problems, and drug addiction were widespread. Education was nationalized, but so was health care. They and party launched numerous efforts to build rural hospitals, advanced cooperatives, would later construct small power plants and major hospitals, massive uh, popular sanitation efforts to help improve living standards. Life expectancy went from 43% from 1950 to 44% in, uh, oh wait, to 44, not, went from, life expectancy went from 43 to 44, and then in 1958, but all then went way up to 64, at the age of 64 in 19, oh, 1976. Other victories and advances in social conditions from 1949 to 1958. Eradication of numerous common diseases due to vaccine uh, campaign, vaccination campaigns guaranteed of housing, later to food and water and electricity, addiction especially to opium, decreased significantly rehab centers. Crime went down as the state rebuilt from war and economic opportunities grew. Mass youth organizations were created to benefit the Chinese youth. Pioneers, citizens, militia, building of rural and urban national infrastructure, dams and railroads, and etc. Next. Let's see. Oh. So basically, life expectancy by years. Historically, from all the way to current, UN projects annual change. Industry and economic and economy and classes. <sighs> China was composed of the following classes. 60% of the population were poor peasants who, uh, who worked on rented land. 30% were small land or owners struggled to fin financially themselves. The Chinese proletariat was rather small and underdeveloped. The large landlords were major a major reactionary class who opposed development uh, towards capitalism. Small but important section of bureaucrats, corruption, who worked for the KMT, national bourgeoisie, were, were small but influential, strong in the cities. Industry and economy. In 1949, most of China's industry was concentrated in 
Manchuria and in the coastal cities, Chinese economy was rural and backwards. Initial efforts were to focus on measures of restoring economic stability, nationalizing banks to the people's banks, inflation equals from 1,000% all the way down to 15%, introduction of a new currency, restriction of China's black market economy, USSR provided China with huge amounts of financial and technical aid, financial loans were $300 million, 5% of aid, 95 were loans. 10,000 Soviet engineers and planners, 1,500 from the Eastern Bloc were sent. 156 industri industrial pro projects depended on and reliant on Soviet aid expenditures. Numerous of Chinese were sent to the USSR for training and education. The first five-year plan from 1953 to 57 focus on industrial production and heavy industry construction of uh almost 700 large and medium sized industrial products 156 of soviet aid 595 industrial products were uh, completed laying out the groundwork for chinese industrialization gross output of value of industry and agriculture Went from 30% in 1949 to 56.5% in 1957. That, he that heavy industry, a focus plan, went from 60, oh wait, not 60, uh, 26.4% to 40, 8%. Working class increased by 40 million, but put an additional strain on agriculture, achieve a GDP growth rate of 9% high and comparable to the USSR. Despite numerous accomplishments, the first five-year plan had significant limitations. Development, especially for development, still dependent on foreign aid and assistance. Industrial growth was exceeding and put extra strains on agriculture, development lopsided, focus on heavy industries in urban areas and class divide, growth for the proletariat, although empowered and the work was lacking, greatly expanding resources and reserves were often sold abroad, industrial production and distribution still needed more development towards socialism had drained up capital due to mass increase in spending to finance the plan. A large management, cla management class remained in factories and working for profits. So this talks about the first five-year plan measured in millions and tons. Coal... And it talks about the output from 1953 to 1957. It was planned from actual output. Pig, pig iron. You guys can pause it if you want to go see it. Yeah. Basically, the increase of dams and total capacity of the reservoirs and if in effective irrigation areas. Demographic conditions. Let me see. How many slides are there? Whew. I'll be right back. Oh yeah, I'm back. Okay. At the turn of the 1950s, China was facing huge demographic changes and opportunities. Stability rising in living conditions and wages growing in industry assured a population boom. The young population, the young population was incredibly large and needed. Oh, damn it! Incredibly large and needed education and work. Slight but minor imbalances between girls and boys 
boys simply more in lower ages. All demographics predictions showed that agriculture output would not uh, would not keep up with the population growth. Ticking worsened concerns for Mao and the Communist Party in the nation as time went on. Population by country. So basically showing you the increase of population from all the way to 2015. Population in the 50s of demographics. Demographics of the 60s in China. And from 1975. Land reforms of 1949 to 1952. Land reform started off as a capitalist project. Why? Mao and the CPC wanted to remove the semi-feudal conditions in the countryside and create a peasantry that was highly supportive of the CPC and ensure ability to for further reforms. Transition from agriculture into capitalism to create the conditions needed for socialist transition. Farmland was seized and redistributed. On average, every peasant in uh, China now own 0.2 hectares of land speared from a temporary increase in grain and cotton production increased from 1949 to 1952 largely destroyed and replaced feudal land owning class and new overall capitalist class transition from Chinese agriculture from semi-feudal to capitalist conditions and relations. Despite some of the benefits of the land reforms, the law brought with many limitations. Grain and cotton production stagnated, even fell sooner, from 1953 to 1940, 1954. Many peasants had gone into debt due to their individual plot not being profitable enough. Selling land to become uh, a farmhand was common. Capitalist uh, relations of production, still huge lack of agricultural tools and equipment and material, led to a new rural capitalist class that live off the c contracting farmhands. Natural disasters hit in 1953 to 1954, which further uh, degraded land productivity. The Cooperative Movement from 1954 to 1958. The Cooperative Movement from 1954 and 1958 it is seen as the second highest phase of land reform it was capitalist per project, however, meant to bring... Oh, Jesus Christ. This phone charger. Okay, it's overheating meant to bring the conditions for socialism and agriculture beginning of production of distribution based on work contribution would enable the formation of the people's commune which was a clearly socialist project peasants were first organized into mutual aid teams starting from 1954 members shared productive instruments and shared their labor power to increase production Roughly 40 peasants, a few households, and 1955 teams began to be organized into elementary cooperatives. Production instruments were loaned to cooperative loaners, received a share of output and return loading productive instruments. Average from 30 to 40 households starts of coordination and large-scale projects. Advance of cooperatives were set up in 1958 and had these characteristics. Peasants were sold their productive instruments to the cooperatives. Distribution 
was done according to labor contribution, not capital. Taxes paid first proportion to invest in fund and rest of the work team members based on labor in term of distribution and advanced co-ops were a socialist project implementation closely supported by and followed by the communist party and its cadres first firm steps from capitalist to socialist development fiercely opposed by revisionist factions within the communist party of china Socialist transition and development was heavily guided by Mao and the CPC. Feudalism, capitalism to socialism. The role of the USSR. Now we're getting to the controversial part. Okay. Starting from 1956, the USSR adopted a policy of revisionism and social imperialism. Soviets began to use economic and technical aid as a form of blackmail and influence, had practical control of the northeastern provinces of Manchuria's industrial areas, drastically reduced and cut aid to China after it broke with the revisionist line. Soviet exports from uh eight hundred and ninety uh from eight hundred and fifty nine million rubles from nineteen sixty two went down from uh two hundred and ten million rubles. Equipment from five hundred million rubles all the way down to uh twenty two million rubles. Hundreds of industrial projects were halted delayed due to the decrease of Soviet assistance. The USSR wanted to make China its semi-colony and didn't care if it meant destroying its economy. Situation in 1958. The growth industry. Growth massively in the first five-year plan, but was now hampered by the lack of aid and ex- expires seen as a socialist project as the state was charged with distribution and production began to create a class divided between the urban and workers and rural peasants agriculture improved under a cooperative system but too slow to keep up with industrialization and the population slowly began socialized east but needed a better system and accelerated modernization and expansion. Massive population of peasants that was growing rapidly and wanted better living conditions. Foreign. Gradual but massive reductions in Soviet aid and experts. Mao and the Communist Party now needed to only could utilize domestic resources and capital and labor to modernize China. Achievements laid foundations for China and created an industrial base, had finished the capitalization and then began the socialization of agriculture, improvements to education and the social conditions, but still some progress left. Challenges still lacked agriculture cultural productivity instruments and especially advanced machinery now had a develop development entirely by their own means and work agriculture needed to be radically reformed to allow china's further development the next presentation will be on the great leap forward and after and that is all for today guys Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.